phrase I often heard when I was growing up was, when the leaves turn brown, the socks go down. Speaking to a specific curse known as the curse of the Bambino that the Red Sox had had put on them when they traded Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees, he said they would never win another World Series. This held true for 85 years until 2004. In 2004, it looked like it was going to be another one of those years for the Red Sox. They were down in the American League Championship Series to the Yankees, zero games to three. And they had just lost game three, 19 to eight. With Mariano Rivera, the greatest closing pitcher of all time, on the bump to save the series and win the series, the Red Sox pulled off one of the greatest feats in postseason history. In the bottom of the ninth, Kevin Miller walks up in this game four and is replaced by David Roberts, by Dave Roberts as the pitch runner. Roberts stole second and scored on Bill Muller's single to tie the game at four and send it into extra innings. The Red Sox got a walk-off home run from David Ortiz to send the series to a game five. And then in game five, they tied the game in the bottom of the eighth before winning in the 14th inning. Finally, in game six, Kurt Schilling comes on the field, this pitcher with a hurt foot, and he has a bleeding sock in the middle of this game, and they win the game 10 to 3. Or, and they win that game, and then they had a 10 to 3 route in game seven to win the World Series. After this, they would sweep the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. You know, there's really no precedent. No team had ever done what the Red Sox did before that year to come back from down three entire games. And yet they did it. This curse that I told you about, this curse of the Bambino, was finally lifted. Talk about being at a disadvantage for them, right? They had been at a massive disadvantage. In scripture, we often see that a disadvantage isn't necessarily something that we need to worry about if we're willing to trust in God. I want to bring up the story of Gideon today. We see in the story of Gideon in the book of Judges that his army, which was heavily already outnumbered, was whittled down by God from 32,000 men to only 300. Here's what happened when they happened upon the Midianite camp, this giant enemy that they were up against. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that I, that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all the men with torches inside. Watch me, he told them, follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth Shittah toward Zeriah, as far as the border of Abel Mahola, near Tabith. This is a story about how God used 300 people to take out a massive army. And it wasn't because God gave them some amazing fighting prowess. It was because God was able to find a way for them to overcome their enemy without ever even picking up a weapon. You know, sometimes we are at a massive disadvantage in our lives. We don't know how we're going to pay the bills. We don't know what's going to happen with uh, school coming up soon. We don't know what's going to happen. But we do know that God continues to be with us. I keep on saying, God is faithful. God watches over us. Put your trust in God. Because sometimes when you're down 0 to 3, that's about all you can hope for is an act of God to get you where you want to be. It's been fun talking about baseball with you today. See you tomorrow.